When I was in the hospital, I like had both my bloody hands and like on deck, and the doctor comes in and he goes, "What brings you in today?" And I said, "Oh, my sinuses are just killing me." Oh, hey, what's up? How you doing? All right, today I'm gonna tell you how I hurt my hands. Two days ago, I was at the track with my friend Charles. Well, let's back up a little bit. I've been riding really good lately on my BMX bike, like doing tricks that. I haven't done in years, just riding very consistently, riding good. And feeling so good, every once in a while you get checked. Three or four years ago, I lacerated my liver, just my bars came into my chest, just doing routine stuff. Got knocked out a couple years before that, you know. But on this day, me and my friend Charles, who's 12, we're riding the BMX track. He's a 12-year-old uh, BMX legend, basically. He's been riding since he was, I've known him since he was like four. And he was riding the track like, really good. It's like, let's go ride the rhythm section. So I said, okay, let's go. I jumped the first jump, did pump, pump, pump. I was gonna jump that last little roller into the berm. So then I nose case, or I, in the air like this, nose and up. And I just had to throw the bike, get over the bars, landed on both my palms. Then I kind of rolled onto my side. In this asphalt turn that they have, it's really rough. It's kind of like uh, kind of like an old road, basically. It's got like loose gravel in it. So when I went to hit it, it's like a cheese grater just cut me all up, like all the side of my body, and especially my hands. I don't want to show you. If you want to see what my hands look like, send me a direct message on Instagram, Twitter, or if you have my number, text me, and I'll I'll send you the gore pictures. So I'm laying on the ground, and right after it happened. Someone said, are you all right? And I, I felt myself and I was like, no, no, I'm screwed. Like something's wrong here. I, I, I knew I was really hurt, but I didn't know how bad. Mm -hmm. So I went into the office and kind of like just sat down, evaluated myself. And when I went to go and peel my skin back on my palm, I could see what I thought was my bone, but it was actually my uh, tendons. I have a picture of that if you want to see it. <laughs> But I got that one, I got that one, which, I don't know, I might could show you that one. I got a shoulder here, my legs cut up. <clears throat> and uh, so I was like, immediately got up, I was like, all right, I'm going to the emergency room, who is driving me? And uh, that's when I saw Candace, or his name is, his real name is Michael, but I call him Candace. And I was like, let's go right now. And he's like, all right, so we jump in the car, run over to the hospital. I'm calm the whole time. Like, I'm not freaking out. Like, I'm not in even that much pain, but I know that this shit is deep. It's not even bleeding that bad, really. Because it was so deep. Like, normally you get, like, a, a nice little cut. It'll bleed everywhere, like, bleed down your whole arm. And uh, he drove me to the ER. We get in there. And I think things are going great. Like, you know, say, hey, what's wrong? What's going on? And tell him what's up. And, I, and this whole time, I'm really calm. I'm not freaking out at all. Like, it didn't hurt me that bad which I think makes me a lower priority. And I guess I really was. I ended up waiting in there for six hours. So I got my x-rays like immediately and they checked me out immediately. Then I waited around like two hours until I got in the room. Then I waited in the room for another two hours. Then they finally came and checked me out. Then they were like, oh shit, this is really deep. So then they had to go get some other doctor and then they're like, eh, you'll probably be fine. So then they cleaned me up. It was cut so deep and so raw around it, they could only fit three stitches in there. Sewed me up, ready to go. I went in there at 6.30. Okay. Got out of there at 12.30, if that makes 12. The only thing that's like a lot more challenging is cleaning myself and also driving my five-speed transmission <laughs> truck. I have to go more first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, so like, Shifting gears while turning, not happening anymore. Sorry, whoever's behind me. <laughs> hopefully the uh, hopefully the strength on the, because I did cut down to the tendon, so if everything heals up properly in here, I won't have any issues. And there's like this little piece of meat that's like popping out. I looked at today, and I like push it and it's squishy, and it's really gross. This is a bad one. This is a really bad one. <laughs> <laughs> that, one that one was almost like, if you would have cut into that tendon, like, you would have been fucked. Like, that would have been worst case scenario for that injury. So when I run into the uh, doctor's office, they're like, you can wear gloves from now on? I was like, 
I mean, by that principle, all the times that I've torn up my shins, I don't wear shin guards. Yeah. So it's like the one time you need that one layer of protection, yeah. you're not wearing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing. But you wear your helmet. I I, 100% wear my helmet all the time because you have to protect this and you have to protect this. These are replaceable. I'm gonna pull this off. That one looks great now. I'm not even gonna wrap that back. I don't think. See that little meat I was talking about? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. <laughs> here, 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 and here. Overall, it wasn't terrible, but I, like I wouldn't do it again if I had the choice. What's your name? What's your size? My name is Ryan LeBlanc, I bench 155. That's bullshit. I don't know. Well, let's go to the gym. Well, I can't with these hands. Yeah, you can't do anything. Damn it.